Thousands of years ago, Britain was covered in forest. Deep, dark, primordial woodland that had grown undisturbed for thousands of years. These were the landscapes in which our predecessors made their first homes. But over the centuries, we hacked our way out of the forests and built fields and pathways across the land. And we made other marks in the landscape. We made things of beauty. And in doing so, turned nature into culture. Now I can do something as simple as make a small stone circle on the beach here. Now, I'll admit it's not exactly Stonehenge, but it is a cultural act. It couldn't have happened without a human hand. This basic act is the foundation of all human culture, from stone circles onwards. But this film isn't about the monuments of the past. It's about a marvelous kind of modern art that echoes our earliest creative impulses. And it's inspired me since I was a boy. It's an art that can't be bought or sold, doesn't exist in galleries, and has to be found before it can even be seen. It can be as vast as the sky or as small as a pebble. It can take decades, even centuries to make, yet occasionally only last an instant. In this film, I'm going to discover art that's made from nature itself. Art that makes us think in a new way about the beauty and wonder of the natural world and the ways we mark our fleeting place within it. I'll travel across Britain to find these breathtaking artworks and explore the landscapes they inhabit. I'll trek through forests and fields, around gorgeous gardens and to the very edges of our island. And I'll gaze afresh at the skies above. What I find will, I hope, change the way we think about the landscape. And it might just change your view of modern art. This was the first landscape that humans on our island encountered. 6,000 years ago, forests like these covered most of Britain. At times, they must have seemed like dark and forbidding places. But I always think there's something undeniably human about the forest. I often think of forests as being like societies. They are complex and infinitely interconnected communities. And of course, they're made up of individuals, all living their own lives in company. Each tree stands alongside its companions. They start small, grow tall and die an existence not unlike our own. We've always had an important relationship with the forest. So much of human culture has been built from trees and wood. And this connection has inspired one artist to create a very special artwork.
I've come to Snowdonia in North Wales to find it. But like many works of landscape art, it's exceedingly difficult to find. Its location is a secret. But what a secret it is. This is Ash Dome. Twenty-two ash trees mark out a perfect circle thirty feet wide. I've been wanting to come here for as long as I've been interested in art, and it's more beautiful and more moving than I could have imagined. It is an inside made outside, a circle of life made from life itself. It reminds me of the great ancient circular monuments of our predecessors. But this is a work of modern art. Ash Dome was made by the artist David Nash, who has lived and worked in North Wales since 1967. In that time, Nash has devoted himself entirely to making sculptures out of wood. But Ash Dome was something different, a living sculpture. Most outdoor sculptures, I felt, they were like UFOs. They'd be made somewhere else and they just landed. I wanted something which belonged to a place and something which didn't resist the elements but actually engaged with the elements. So the ash dome came from that thought. Nash planted ash dome as saplings back in 1977, before I was born. The 70s was a dangerous time, you know, politically, economically internationally. People were talking about the human being would destroy itself before we got to the 21st century. And I thought I'll make a sculpture which is aimed at the 21st century. Nash employed ancient techniques to adapt the shape of each tree. And over the years he has continued to tend and train them. In all the different film and photographs of it over the years, since 1977, it gets bigger and I get older. Which yeah, I, really, I really like that. So I hope he's something when I'm about 85, if I can get that far, 90, or hobbling about in the, in the ash dome. People talk today about modern culture being too fast, too disposable, too dispensable, too much about short-term satisfaction. Well, this place couldn't be more different because this beautiful, beautiful thing has taken the best part of 40 years, the best part of one man's entire career to make. And hopefully, like the forest that surrounds it, it will continue to grow for many years to come. Ash Dome embodies the oldest idea of culture, to cultivate. It is an art of collaboration, the result of man and nature working together. But it is also deeply contemporary, a living monument to one man's faith in an uncertain future.
When Neolithic settlers first arrived in Britain, they brought with them wheat, barley and livestock, and a new attitude towards the landscape. Unlike native hunter-gatherers, they weren't content to take the landscape as it came. They wanted to reshape it. They cut down ancient forest, cleared the land, and parceled it out for cultivation. And so emerged from the darkness of the wood to the light of the field. To us, the field might seem unremarkable, perhaps even rather quaint but it really was one of the great inventions in the history of our species, because the field didn't only lead to a new kind of organized landscape, it also laid the foundations for the first towns and cities, societies and governments, and for trade and commerce. The field, in other words, was the bedrock of civilization itself. Today, three quarters of land in Britain is devoted to agriculture. More than anything else, it is the field that has shaped our landscape. This is Cumbria, the heart of sheep farming country. It's a patchwork of small fields formed by the dry stone walls that weave across the land. Few have been more inspired by this landscape than the celebrated artist Andy Goldsworthy. The fields to most people, and the landscape to a lot of people, is often a pastoral backdrop to weekends in the country, which is not how I see the landscape. For me, it is a place to be challenged and to learn, and the field, particularly so, is a place which farmers cultivate and fight for. It is a battlefield for the farmer. And without their constant attention and work in the land, it will revert back to being a woodland. Andy Goldsworthy is best known for the ephemeral works he makes in the landscape. short-lived, delicate sculptures, using only the materials he finds around him. But some of Goldsworthy's work engages directly with the age-old traditions of agriculture. From 1996, over a period of seven years, he transformed 46 disused sheepfolds across Cumbria into a series of beautiful outdoor sculptures. These dry stone wall enclosures were originally used for the cleaning, clipping and marking of the flock before modern farming techniques rendered them redundant. And in a quiet valley, in the heart of the Lake District, is my favorite, the Tilberthwaite Touchstone Fold. Now at first, this seems to be an ordinary sheep fold. It's got these dry stone walls that would have contained the flock. There would have been a gate right here. But what Andy Goldsworth has done is he's made four beautiful additions into the walls themselves. And this is one of them. It's an absolutely beautiful sculpture made from slate from the surrounding Tilberthwaite quarries. And what's lovely about it is the way that Goldsworthy has arranged the stone to create a beautiful visual rhythm. So you've got these horizontal bands of stone here, then you've got this circular plane with vertical bands of stone. It almost looks like a clock face. 